Hey, this is Richard with Automate Everything. So I want to do a video on how to program a delay timer. And what I mean by that is a physical delay timer. So in my car, in my latest video, I showed that how you can actually shut off your car um, with a delay on it that'll allow you to say if you want to be in a situation where you want to go out and grab some groceries, pump some gas, it'll keep the Pi powered on for one hour and then you come back and then you get into your car and it starts right back up again. So in order to get that working, I bought a piece of hardware from a place called Timer Shop. Actually, I got it on Amazon and it's a fully configurable timer and it has, I mean, a multitude of functions. And the function that I used it for was, as I said, a delay timer. And um, if you watch this video, it'll walk you through step by step how to program it. And, and what I mean by program is like you actually have to physically program this thing because again, it's highly configurable. It can do so many different things. So you know, the nice thing is that it can, you can use it for so many different functions, but then the trade-off is, is that because it can do so many things, you have to go through this programming process. So I'll explain how that's done in this video and also how to wire it into your car, because obviously that's the other important thing, right? Once you get it configured, then you got to make sure you wire it properly and then you can hook it up to a shutdown script and everything else. I've already got that shutdown script posted in one of my later videos. So you can go ahead and add that in there. So, um, here you go. Um, enjoy the video. If you like what you see, please subscribe, you know, leave me some like, leave me some comments if you have any questions and, um, let me know what you think. Okay, so in one of my earlier videos, I mentioned that I was going to address the uh, shutdown of the Pi because currently the Pi is connected to the ignition source. So effectively, when I turn on the ignition on the car, the Pi turns on, and then when I shut the car off, the Pi just immediately shuts off. So every time that I shut off my car, it's literally just like pulling the plug on the Pi. So that means it does a bad shutdown. Just in general, it's just bad practice, right? You don't want to pull the plug every time you turn off a system. You want to shut it down gracefully. So in order to address that, I bought this uh, 5 to 20 volt relay timer. So this thing is fully configurable. The problem is the thing is a pain in the ass to configure. So I bought it just thinking like, hey, I can just connect it and yeah, it'll be easy, right? Um, I was wrong. Well. It actually is a pain in the ass to, to set up. So um, what I had to do is actually had to ghetto rig a, um, a configuration setup. So before you can even use the thing, you have to configure it. So um, to configure it, uh, first of all, you need to have some kind of uh, load. So what I did was I took a 12 volt um, LED light here, and that is my load. Um, then you need obviously a source because you have a circuit here, right? So this is a nine volt battery. Now, even though this is a 12 volt load and nine volt source, um, it should be just fine to run the thing, right? So um, as you can see here, uh, it's not doing anything. And, um, but if I go ahead and I disconnect the thing, you can see it, it does turn on for a second, but uh, as soon as you, it basically just pulses on for like a split second and then turns right back off again. So that's obviously not gonna be adequate, right? Because if I connect this thing to my Pi, the Pi would basically just turn on for like half a second and then turn right back off again. So this thing needs to be configured. So um, just the way this thing works, um, I've got the manual online and I have to basically go through the manual. It's a 30 page manual. It is just ridiculous. Um, but there's also some YouTube videos on it. So I'm just going to have to educate myself a little bit. But the way I understand it is, is that uh, uh, the blue wire is a trigger. So that's what I'm actually going to use to trigger my GPIO pin. And um, when this trigger goes low, it's going to trigger the shutdown script. So this is what's going to be going to my GPIO, right? Um, these two wires here are for actually doing the configuration. And I think basically what you do is you, you touch them to ground um, and you basically go through the different configuration settings. So obviously the black wire is the ground, right? So um, I'm going to have to figure out how this works. So I'm going to just drop off for a second and uh, see how I configure this thing. But basically what I want to do is my hope is, is that I can actually configure this thing to turn on for an hour. Um, I want it to be a one hour time off delay so that basically it's going to stay on for as long as this, as long as this trigger um, actually detects power. Then when this trigger um, goes low, 
then it's going to basically trigger the delay to turn off after one hour. So let me go through and set this thing up and then I'll show you how it's done. All right, so to program this thing the way I want it to, I want to have it as a one hour delay time off with the trigger. So in order to do that, um, there's two ways to do it. I can just hold it, uh, the green and the white wire together for one hour and uh, actually one hour of duration to kind of set the time for one hour. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, there's a better way to do it and they have a mode called HMS mode where you can actually set the hours by tapping it just one time. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put it into HMS mode. Now to put it into HMS mode, I got to first go to programming mode and then I got to skip forward four modes um, to get to the function mode and then um, and then touch the green wire to ground and that'll put me in HMS mode. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, well, that's just the way this thing works, right? All right, so I'll start out by putting in programming mode. So touch the green and white wire to ground, apply power. You can't see the light, but there it goes. See, it stays on for about three seconds and then turns off. I'll move that so you can see that. All right, now I gotta do this four more times. One, two, three, four. Great. Now I gotta touch the green wire to ground. Great. Now did you see that it flashed twice? So there, now I know that it is in HMS mode. Now I'm going to pull power. Yeah, that's pulling power. <laughs> Just touching it, getting it away from the conductor there. And then put it back into programming mode again. By punching those two together, applying power, taking that off. All right. Now, using the white wire, I need to skip ahead four parameters. That'll get me to hours, because basically it goes from like half seconds to seconds to minutes to minutes times 10, blah, 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 blah. So if I skip forward four parameters, that'll get me to hours. Okay. 1 30th of a second, skip that one. Seconds, skip that one. Minutes, skip that one. Minutes times 10, skip that one. All right, now I'm at hours. So I'm just going to quickly tap it once. There we go. It acknowledged it. Now I'm going to tap it. Now I'm going to hold it. So it saved that parameter. Great. Now I got one hour in there. Now skip the next parameters. There we go. Hours times 100. Skip that one. Hours times a thousand. Skip that one. Now, see, it stays on. So, there it is. I just configured it for one hour. Now, I just gotta make it a delay time off. So, that's the last thing I gotta do. Then, this thing is finally freaking configured. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into programming mode and make it a delay off timer. So, first. Programming mode, white and green to ground. Okay. Mode two to get it into my function, change functions. Okay. Now, delay off time is mode 12. Function 12. Yes. So I do this 12 times. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, now I gotta set the trigger mode to two. That'll make it to where if it goes from low to high, it'll pull power, basically make its do its command. Just just go with me here. Alright, so one, two. There. 
Now configuration should be done. Okay, I wired up the timer. So now I'm gonna show you how I have this thing put together. So it looks like a mess here, but I'll try my best to explain what's going on. And uh, I apologize for all the ghetto wiring, but uh, that's what ends up happening when you do things in a pinch. But it all works, I promise. So here's the timer, like I said. So um, we'll start with the incoming power. So this yellow wire is my battery power. So this is what's going into the timer as an input. That battery power goes through the timer, obviously to ground. The output is the yellow wire. This output goes into my 12 volt to 5 volt step down power supply. And that powers everything in my system. So right now, everything in my system is going through the timer um, supplied by the battery. But as you can see, nothing's on right now. And that's because you need the trigger wire. So the way this timer works is that trigger needs to be high in order for the power to actually turn on. And that trigger wire is actually coming off of this, which is my ignition. So my ignition turns on, that trigger wire is gonna go high and it's gonna turn everything on. I also have another wire you can see coming out of there. So not only does the ignition go to the trigger wire, it also goes to this relay that is a 12 volt relay because this is 12 volts power and that goes into a uh, the input of my 12 volt relay board. The output of it is my GPIO. So there's a dry contact that will get powered on when this turns on and that will turn on the GPIO pin. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. There it is. So you can see my GPIO pin turned on and I turned on power. Everything all of a sudden turned on. So, again, uh, this is just a test. But so far, I'm encouraged what I'm seeing. I'm actually powering this thing up for the first time. Um, so, yeah, everything looks like it's the way it's supposed to look now. Um, crankshaft's a little slow right now. Um, I've got some stuff i got to configure, but that's okay. So, I'm online. Okay, now what's going to happen now is I have not set up the shutdown trigger yet. So, when I turn power off... Notice that crankshaft stays on again because that's powered by the uh, the battery. But as you can see, my trigger wire went low because the relay's off. So everything's working the way it's supposed to. All I got to do is set up that GPIO pin to trigger my shutdown timer or sh trigger the shutdown um, script. And everything's good. So I'm gonna set that up and then run this test one more time. All right, now let's go and test this thing out. So what I've done is I've set my timer, the ignition pin to 23. So it's GPIO 23. The delay right now is just five seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, right now you can see that ignition relay's on, which means the ignition pin is now high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut power, and then after five seconds, this thing should shut down gracefully. There goes that. Wait five seconds. There it goes. Off. Great. So now I have created a uh, graceful shutdown. And my car didn't have a delayed ignition like some cars happen to have. So the way to do it is basically creating your own with a combination of a timer and a relay board going to your GPIO and triggering a shutdown script. It's a little bit of work. Um, in reality, though, this probably took me a total of about um, maybe a little over an hour. And 45 minutes of that was done just trying to figure out how the hell to program the timer. Once I figured out how to program the timer, doing the actual wiring was quite simple. Um, and, um, you know, if you know GPIO and you know how to set up everything else, crankshaft is really simple because it already has the shutdown script capability built in. 
you simply just tell it what to do and it does it. Just tell it what GPIO pin to use. So that's it. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. But I know people have been asking about how the shutdown works. So that's how it's done.